Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP. And once again, this is the seven-day chart. And the reason I'm showing this chart in this video is because I want to put a couple things into perspective. Number one, we've been going sideways for a long period of time now. Even the one month points that out. But if you look at the one year chart, we're actually up 47.42% on the one year. Last year at this time, we were sitting under 40 cents on XRP. And you know, to get to the next level, you gotta stay patient. To get to the exciting time, you gotta continue holding XRP. You can't get shaken out by us going sideways for long periods of time. This is the part of crypto that teaches you patience. There's two types of people who trade crypto. People with money and people with trading experience. Every four years, they switch places. You know, I always see people saying, I just got into crypto. I'm going to put in X amount of dollars and I'm going to easily 10X it within the next month or two. Most of the time, it doesn't work out. And those people end up leaving crypto at a loss. But the people who stay patient long enough can see a 20, 30, 40X return on their investment. And even Warren Buffett said, the stock market is a device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient. Patience is key in crypto. And that's why I stress it so much in a lot of my videos. But along the way, I also try to keep you positive. That's why I show you the growth around Ripple and XRP. Because as long as you stay positive, you can also stay patient for a little while longer. It can help you get to the finish line. World Economic Forum 2024 is bullish for Ripple XRP. So I want to point out a couple things that are stated here. Garlinghouse will participate in a panel called Clear-Eyed About Crypto, which will focus on global attitudes towards digital currencies. This panel will be a part of the World Economic Forum's Center for Financial and Monetary Systems and will include discussions on enhancing the financial system through technology and supporting climate action through financial transformation. You know, Ripple is going very big around the World Economic Forum right now. And the World Economic Forum is pushing exactly for Ripple and XRP and Stellar and XLM and XDC and HBAR and Casper and all these technologies to be part of our financial system going forward. Ripple's larger presence at the World Economic Forum could also indicate the company's intention to make the necessary connections to expand its political influence. Ripple's out there looking for more support for their product as well, maybe opening up new payment rails for XRP to run on in the future. But none of this could ever happen without crypto. You wouldn't have cross-border payments being pushed into the digital age without crypto. As CoinCaptor earlier reported, Garlinghouse has been very vocal about the company's support for pro-crypto candidates in the 2024 presidential elections, emphasizing the need for the U.S. to take a more proactive stance in the global cryptocurrency landscape. You know, this is the year we are going to see the 2024 presidential election. And I think crypto is going to be talked about a lot as we get closer to election time. And it's going to be a great time for crypto to be highlighted all over the mainstream media news. I think a lot of new investors are going to come in to crypto as well. But we do need pro-crypto candidates because how else will innovation grow inside the United States? It won't as long as they keep trying to crush crypto. Just in, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse explores the idea of an IPO outside the United States amid regulatory challenges 
with the SEC. Now, this clip has very low sound, but take a listen to what Brad says here. As we started this conversation, I am very optimistic about the crypto market in 2024 uh, because of those things around putting compliance first, right? making sure we focused on solving real problems for customers and not just the speculative cycle. I think we'll put the whole industry on a really good trajectory. So, you know, we have been cash flow positive the last couple of years. Uh, you know, that has been a unique place in the market and allowed us to invest not only in the core of Ripple, but also in acquisitions. And even, you know, recently you may have, we've now repurchased uh, over a billion dollars of stock from our shareholders. Uh, that's quite frankly, because it is not an immediate term priority to go public. Uh, you know, in the United States, trying to go public with a very hostile regulator that has to approve your S1 that doesn't sound like a lot of fun to me. You know, Coinbase obviously had their S1 approved and now the SEC is suing them for doing things that was outlined in their S1. Now, that, as I mentioned, there's a hearing tomorrow in the US about some of that, but I think it's indicative of uh, why would we want to subject ourselves to an SEC that is openly hostile to this industry. So and that's why you won't see an IPO announced here in the U US for Ripple for a long period of time still you know people keep saying they're gonna have an IPO by summer they're gonna have it by next month or the next month after that Brad does not want any more problems with the SEC look what happened with Coinbase they got approval of their S1 and then they got sued on things that were mentioned in the S1 Brad doesn't want that going forward. He wants to put the whole SEC Ripple lawsuit in his rearview mirror as soon as possible. But I understand why Brad's delaying that as well. Because they don't want to pay out an astronom astronomical amount of money either. They want to get that amount down. Something that they could live with. And you know, here until we get rid of Gary Gensler, you're not going to see anything big happen for crypto because nobody wants to take the chance of ending up in another lawsuit. SEC needs to be prosecuted under these laws. Perjury, obstruction of justice, conspiracy, fraud, securities fraud, bribery. And you know, what happened with debt box is something that should be on, on the mainstream media news right now. The first reply brief by the debt box re defendants has been filed, and it's a doozy. It's an important to read because the personal consequences, including several family member families unexpectedly visited at their homes by armed men, are chilling. David Schwartz said that. And Joe Katz only provided a few screenshots. One poor fellow was literally stranded in Africa because of the SEC's false statements to the court. This guy could not make it home because they seized their assets. And it was all based on lies. Why is this not talked about on the mainstream news? Because they don't care what's happening at the SEC as long as they're targeting crypto. That's what it comes down to. And that's why Gary Gensler has Elizabeth Warren in his corner all the time. Because she's pushing for the same exact thing. They're looking out for the big banks and they're trying to crush crypto. Ripple fires criticism at the SEC. CEO spotlights agencies losing streak. Brad says it's insanity. The Ripple CEO spotlights the SEC's losing streak, stating, I think Gary Gensler is doing the same thing over and over again, and he thinks that somehow he's going to win in court. He has continued to lose in court. One of the definitions of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome, Garlinghouse said, referring to what he perceives as Gensler's ongoing anti-crypto campaign. And you know, you can't keep just dragging company after company into court expecting a different outcome. At some point, somebody needs to step in and put an end to this already. Why is Congress always just talking? actually take some action finally that's what we need here in the u.s then there's this ripple ceo and ctfc commissioner to share spotlight this is actually really good news because i think the cftc 
wants a clear path forward for crypto. Brad says LFG 2024 is going to be big. Ripple has announced that its CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, will be sharing the stage with Carolyn DeFam, a commissioner of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, the federal agency that oversees the derivatives markets, including futures, options, and swaps. Garlinghouse and FAM will speak on Tuesday at 4.20 p.m. CET in a session titled Crypto at a Crossroads, Future Proofing Digital Assets. You know, this could turn into something much bigger and i would like to see more power given to the cftc here in the united states i think they would definitely look out for the retail investor as well ripple makes a few appearances in november's global standards mapping initiative 4.0 particularly for Web3, along with Property, Medico, SA, and ESG, along with partner Thalo, IO. Now, this is why Ripple acquired Medico, Net Zero, and transition plans from Web3 players. These plans can take several forms, depending on the focus areas of Web3 players across industries. In addition to have deployed a net zero plan by 2028 and deployed significant investments in the carbon markets, Ripple has built a climate-friendly Ripple ledger on which to push Web3 solutions that can be deployed. Its acquisitions into market infrastructure can also be deployed for carbon markets. For instance, Ripple's acquisition of Medico as a custody solution can allow users to custody tokenized carbon credits. And that is going to be a multi-trillion dollar market. Think of all that value sitting at Medico. Think about that value also sitting on the XRP ledger in the future. But again, Ripple is going after a lot of money. Many people think Bitcoin is the real OG. That's false. Bitcoin popularized the crypto space, but the real OG in crypto space is Ripple. Now take a listen to this, because people keep saying Bitcoin is the first cryptocurrency, and it's the only cryptocurrency that will ever be used to transfer value. Questions, and I expect that there are quite a few questions. And the reason that I'm pleased uh, to have Marcus here is, A, I knew him before he was at Ripple. And so I found it extremely intriguing that he decided to to go over there. But in addition, for those who haven't really been following the whole cryptocurrency, and this is beyond cryptocurrency, blockchain, uh, tokenization, the transformation of the wholesale markets, et cetera, debate carefully, it's very important to remember that Ripple predates Bitcoin. And I think that uh, is an important aspect and kind of putting a stake in the ground that Bitcoin may have been popularizing things, uh, but it wasn't the only horse in town. So Bitcoin was not the only horse in town and Ripple predates Bitcoin. You know, I think what happened was Ripple had a plan for cross border payments. And the introduction of beta test coin, Bitcoin, was used to test the market, see how payments would work. But, you know, that's why Brad also said that XRP could be the next Bitcoin. He was talking about the technology behind XRP, what its utility is and its use case is. But, you know, whenever you hear some Bitcoin Maxi talk, they always talk like car salesmen. They always want to show you the value of Bitcoin. And the reason that they have to bring all that hype is because Bitcoin has no utility. So you have to have hype to drive the price. With XRP, eventually utility is going to kick in, and that's what's going to drive the price of XRP. That's why I always said... You know, when people talk about IPOs and ETFs, I really don't care about that at all for XRP. I'm, I care more about where XRP is going based off of its utility. 
And the reason I point out tokenization so much is because tokenization is going to be bigger than cross-border payments. And I think Brad even knows that. And carbon credits, who knows how big that market's going to be in the coming years. And next is going to be AI. And I stress that a lot in my videos because AI is the next big thing. It's the fifth industrial revolution. And it's going to merge with blockchain at some point. And Brad's definitely taking us in that direction as well. But you know, until it all happens, you do got to stay patient and stay positive so we can get rich together. And you know, somebody said I need to put that on t-shirts. Maybe I will in the near future. And you know, I always looked at things as I don't care about being a brand or anything like that. I don't care, you know, about fame and all this other nonsense that goes on in crypto. I'm here for one reason, to get you to that finish line so you can get that financial freedom. Because I know it's important, you know, because I'm a working class person. I want to quit my nine to five job. You want to quit your nine to five job. I want to help get you there. I don't care about anything else around crypto. Getting you to that point is what's most important to me. It's the same reason you don't see me selling a hundred things on this channel. I have one thing that I always tell you, you know, and it's Mech C. And it's because I have an affiliate with them. And the reason I got that affiliate was because back then they were still locking up your Casper over at Uphold and locking up other cryptocurrencies as well. But it was never about money or anything like that. It's about getting you to your financial freedom. And that is what I'm always going to be focused on on this channel. So until it all happens, I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.